Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Loop Hero. Uh, it's been a little bit of time again since my last recording, it's been a bit ill for the last day, but eager to get back into this game and keep at it. If I remember in the last episode, we managed to beat the Act 2 boss with the Rogue against all expectations. I think I said somewhere that I had, I, my expectations were about 10% chance of beating the boss after we spawned him. We went for it and we managed to beat it. I think we were helped quite a lot by having outposts around the boss fight. Those two extra targets just took enough damage off us to survive. They also helped us break the mirrors, which I didn't really ever think about. So I think Act 2 boss could also benefit us from the uh, the watchtowers. If you can get into that fight with some artillery just peppering in to help you destroy the shields. I actually think the battle's not too bad for us. It's probably on a par with difficulty of the first one. So we picked up a few resources. We immediately left afterwards. We didn't loop for a long time. So we're still just off being able to afford some of these things. I would like to get the river if I can do. Uh, I need to really pay attention to what's given us some of these resources because we need some more of these orbits of expansions to get the river. And we've built a lumberjack now in the top left corner. This has unlocked the ability to craft furniture, but we are not doing it right now because we have no uh, we have no places to really place any more items. So there's no reason to build them. So the only thing we're really missing, as I said, is Bridge River Alchemist Tenant. We also built a Mud Hut, I think. We have now one of them, which just gave us an extra slot. So it could be worth placing a few more of those down to put a, a few more of the supply trinkets in. But I'm quite happy. I'm more inclined probably to actually go for Watchtowers before the Mud Huts. So I think they can be pretty beneficial in boss fights. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try and beat the Act 2 boss with the Necromancer. So he's probably the class that I have the most difficulty in playing, even though he's not the one I've died the most with. Because he has a very unique style, and you're going to hear this word again whenever I play him. It's all about tempo. You need to be able to get your skeleton summons out faster than enemies are destroying them. If enemies destroy them too quickly, you just lose. You get suffocated by the enemies. So to that end, let's modify our deck and select the Necromancer. I think I'm quite happy to have Arsenal in here again. I don't think Ancestral Crypts would be great for us, although it is a consideration because we are splitting our health off more, so maybe our HP doesn't actually matter as much. In terms of other items, I think I'm going to remove the Outpost. It helps us for the Rogue because there is a synergy that the Outpost would take all the yellow and orange items dropped, but because the Rogue gets trophies, the Outpost basically has no effect. So the Outpost with the Rogue is a really strong synergy. In terms of what I'm thinking of placing back in, I think I'll bring the treasury back. I'm quite happy with these environment tiles, I'm not sure I really need the desert. And I've not really had many benefits of the desert. Same with the swamp, we haven't had huge benefits of it. Although part of me is tempted to try and do another swamp run. But actually I think for now we'll just leave it. Uh, battlefield is beneficial for us. Let's bring Vampire Mansion back. We're not too bad against multiple enemies, as long as we're careful. I'm leaving Spider Cocoon out. I don't value it too much. We can also bring Ruins back, actually. Because, again, this isn't a difficult tile if we plan well ahead. And if I do that, I'm probably going to remove the Wheat Fields. So we found out last time what those Bladed Fields were. It's just an additional mob, basically, that eats up some of our attacks. I can't remember the other effect of it. It was very annoying. I ended up oblivioning one of them, so it's not a great synergy to go for, it appears. Road Lantern, I'm definitely going to keep in. Bookery, I don't know. So we died on one of our runs with Rogue when we uh, fought the uh, the Tomes. We killed it in one fight, but we couldn't kill it in the second fight. But is it worth being able to recycle our cards? Hmm, maybe. Uh, I'm also going to show people that haven't seen this before, I guess, the forest that you think I'm going to put Storm Temple back in. This synergizes with forests and thickets. It turns them into burning woods. This was in my Super Chill episode. I accidentally found the synergy. I think I do prefer these. I think the forest and thickets have been one of the best cards we've added to our collection since probably Blood Grove. This extra attack speed is so nice in uh, battles. So you get gaining the survivability of rock, the sustain from the meadow, and then just the raw damage off the forest. I think this is quite nice. Desert, 
I think synergy effects, you have to have, sorry, not synergy, uh, effects that face, affect both you, the ally, and the enemies have to be balanced very well. And I think at the moment, really, it hurts us more than it's hurting our enemies. So, I can't really find a way of really optimizing for this. The only thing I would say is if a boss had incredibly high HP, then it hasn't got a use. But I think for us, it's not too useful. I've not found any synergies either with Desert and Sand Dune in terms of the tile synergies, like the combos. So there might actually be a reason to place these if they can turn into something else. But we will, we'll definitely experiment with the Deserts and Sand Dunes again at some point, and so with the Swamps. But I'm not sure what we need for either of them. As I said, it might be this River card that we're waiting on. Uh, Chrono Crystals we don't need. And I think all said and good. We could try Temporal Beacon again. We have had the Vampire Mansion back in. So it'll spawn Time Watchers, but only uh, on tiles where there aren't Vampires. Let's try it. Let's see how we do against them. So this speeds up time by 50% within its range. I don't know if this affects our attack speed. I'm not sure how that interacts with the time of day. But either way, the time of day will let us get our heals per day faster. It does also mean that enemies are going to spawn a bit quicker, which as I said, isn't really my goal with this uh, class. But I think we can like curtail it with road lanterns, hopefully. So let's try this deck and see how we do. So I'm just going to quickly immediately pause it for the Arsenal. Arsenal has to go near a road. I want to place it in a tile that probably we're not going to do too much with. So let's just stay there for now. And interestingly, our Necromancer uh, gets a shield slot, so we can actually equip something on him for the first loop. Unlike normal, where uh, we can't. And interestingly, the defense is on the skeletons, which we were pretty certain would be the case. Okay, we have our first uh, dopamine engine, the treasurer. We're going to place rocks. Oh, we don't have to place rocks on the corners, actually. Let's make our mountains up here. We could use thickets on the corners. First loop, as usual, won't be a problem for us. We'll deal with this quite comfortably. But we just want to get the cards to make the next loop as difficult as possible so that we start to out value the enemies. So going into this, what do I think my chances of beating the boss? I mean, it's hard to say this early on, of course, but I don't feel as comfortable with this class as I do the other ones. So I'm not too hopeful right now. And I think I would retreat before just dying. I don't think it's worth having a uh, like Hail Mary at the boss, really. We do have a use now for these items again. So I would like to take things home with me if I can. But I think we've been playing much better in the last few episodes. We went through a brief period where uh, things were a bit sketchy and we lost a few runs to stupid things. But since then, I, as I said, the level of play has been generally better. And the only things that have really surprised us are things that we didn't know about. For example, that tome uh, battle, which basically just killed us suddenly. Max skeletons plus one skeleton level up, it's just an upgrade. And continue building our mountains up here. The other thing I'm looking for early on is some village cards if we can get them. Just to pick up uh, the quest to get more XP faster. Also it gives us an another source of healing which is quite nice. So I'm going to put both these rings. Because we haven't got one. Day passes and we've completed the first loop. So we've got chests here. It'll be interesting to see as well with the watchers what quality of loot to drop. But this is kind of unfortunate. I've made a bit of a misplay here. I could have saved one tile had they made this better, but I don't think it's going to matter in the long run. I should really just build the sea around first. And in case I get one in treasure in time, then I can save it on the tile here. It's fine. Just have to remember these things. We've not used them for a while, because I've not really raised over the quality of the loot we get from them, but we do get cards as well. And cards early on is very beneficial to us. So a ring with attack speed instead of evasion, I think I'll take it. I 
things so far looking pretty nice for us. We have picked up our first road lantern. I'm just gonna hold on to this for now. There's no tile at the moment that I want to restrict the enemies on. So what would I look at restricting? It's probably gonna be the grove, blood grove type things. Because they're a main source of spawning multiple enemies. I could also save it to spawn a goblin camp so I like throw them around goblin camps. And I've picked up two now, so that is becoming more tempting. But we'll see. As I said, no reason to use them right now. I'd also hold and pop in this treasury just before this loop, because currently we don't need it. I like to wait till we come around the camp, finish a loop, then pop it, because our loot is based off the enemy level, which goes up every time we complete a loop. Good one here. So we have one tile left. I'll hold a meadow if we get it. In fact, I might even just play a meadow on here. We have blood clots now. So submerged, it goes underground after two strikes and can't be targeted. So these are kind of an annoying enemy. They also made us change our target onto the chest, which isn't ideal. But the chest has dropped us some nice loot. And I'll take it. So where do we think we want to be with Necromancer? Our run in Act 1 which we won was one where we went for both the skeleton level and the skeleton quality. At the moment it feels like you have to go for these types of things. Because it's no good like your skeleton's being rubbish because it'll get you get one shot by like enemy mobs and you can't summon them faster than they can kill them. So I think you have to pick up uh, skeleton level, sorry. The quality, the quality I don't think is as important. So you might notice me going more for level than quality. Uh, more HP, but heroes regen. I think I'm happy with the ring we've got. And so much is my claim, I'm actually going to take this straight as a 0 0.01 upgrade. We're not going to summon three skeletons that often right now anyway. But generally these like, first three loops aren't too bad. So you can basically just throw on whatever you're getting and you should be fine. Place it on the thicket, and we have our first grove. We normally like to place one around the boss to help us in the boss fight, so I think I'm going to set that up right now. Another grove. Again, another place we like to put groves on the inside of these like knots. Sadly, this is kind of a smaller one, so we don't get as good a benefit as we could have got. But it's still fine. The Blood Grove, as I said, I think it's been the best card we've ever added to the deck. You get such good loot off the single enemy that it's well worth having in the deck, in my opinion. Uh, as I said, I, I didn't end up holding this meadow card. I don't feel under any pressure at the moment to pop these treasuries. I think that's when the best use is when you start to feel like getting pinched a bit by the game. And you just whack them both open. And see what's inside. But so far, pretty quiet run. We, uh, we're coming close to getting our 3x3 three three mountain. We've got first blood grove as well, which I'll place around the boss, I think, for now. Just to make sure we have it there. So that will help us with the boss battle. Mountains down, 3x3. Three three. I'm going to get a goblin camp. So let's see the, where the goblin camp spawns. Okay, that's fine. They can only spawn on this tile. So I think I'm going to place a rose lantern here and a rose lantern here. So this will reduce the number of goblins we can get on this tile by two. So I think they can only have three on there now, which is fine. A skeleton level up, I'll take it. Skeletons now have 25 HP, which is okay. Picked up a blacksmith hammer, which I think we've seen before, so it's plus one defense if we take it home and equip it. That's fine. Uh, we could reduce goblins again by another one. I think I'm okay for now. I think I'll hold this one. I think we should be able to deal with three goblins late game. We picked up our first ruins as well, and we want to place ruins generally in places where we're going to put a village in front of them. So the Scorch Worms don't get an effect of their artillery. So is this a chest or a mimic? It's a chest, so this is a free battle for us. 
We have very small regen, so we're not really gaining much from fighting the chess. We also can't pick up vampirism on this character. So, more regen, summon quality up. I think this is better. And HP up. We lose some of our regen, attack speed and defense. Lose a bit of summon quality. Again, I think I'm happy enough with that. So again, this is going to be a bit of an annoying fight with the blood clot. He's submerged now, so we can't target him. He makes us change targets into the chest. Fortunately, again, it's not a mimic. But this enemy is pretty dangerous, actually. You should really notice the quality of loot we're getting, because there's no reason to fight these enemies if their loot quality is bad. And we did get pretty poor loot off it, actually, so maybe this isn't worthwhile putting Battlefield next to one another to give us the blood pass. Uh, I've also picked up a cemetery, which I think we're going to place in the land of the goblins. And now I can't get more than uh, three skeletons spawning on there, which is fine by me. Another ring, which I'm just going to flick over for the stats. And we can just get summon level. Hmm. Instead of evasion. I think I'm just going to hold on. It shouldn't matter too much. Still early game. We also had a very interesting run with the road last time in the sense that we started off pretty slowly, unlike with the warrior where we only complete maybe like six loops before we get to the uh, time to spawn the boss. We were on like loop 10 or 11, I think, before we spawned the boss. We were just flying around the loops very quickly. I guess it's a theoretical, like, valid strategy, but you are risking that the enemies, just the general mobs, were getting very strong by the end of the run. So we're one tile off both of these treasuries. I still don't feel in an urge to pop them just yet. But I should now consider holding on to a meadow and a thicket. I'll just place this meadow down. Oh no, actually I will hold it. Yeah, I can place a meadow there and it'd be blooming now. So this is just two goblins. It's a tricky fight early on, they should give pretty good loot. The goblin leader is always the best target first for us. He can get a buff off his allies dying, and he also increases the attack speed of allies. Unfortunately, okay, unfortunately, we are targeting him. But this fight isn't going great so far. For very fortunate to get a decent quality skeleton there. But this is very prolonged right now. Again, very lucky we've picked up a good skeleton. But we're now going into our potions. I'm not sure how he's healing. Encouragement. Hmm. Well, this isn't going great, I'm not gonna lie. They're attacking very quickly. And as I said, this was the risk with the Necromancer. So we're just being suffocated right now. I'm kind of happy he's actually targeting us and not the skeletons. Okay, we've played one of them now, so we should be able to get the other one. But that was pretty horrifying. I thought we were just going to die then, slowly. Uh, skeleton level, yes please. Took a big amount of damage. We used four potions in that fight as well. My answer to the question now, will I open these? I will open them on the next loop. I mean, even considering putting another road lantern down there to stop uh, another goblin spawning. But let's just see how this plays out. It will also retroactively remove mobs, by the way. I don't know if anyone's uh, noticed. But if there's three enemies max on a tile and I put another road lantern down, it'll just remove one of them. They don't get to stay there if they've already spawned. Which is pretty nice in our favour. Uh, attack speed up instead of skeleton level. We lose some regen, we gain some magic HP. I'm going to think no. I think our skeletons need to be a bit stronger. At the moment, 1.87 is pretty low. We could get a great item that basically is that. And the quality is only 15%. Ah, summon quality on a shield, so we've never seen this before. Mainly because we've, I don't think we've ever had a run with Arsenal and the uh, Necromancer. Max skeletons I'm not interested in, and skeleton levels are out, so no. Quality up to 32 now, so we're getting, we get more of these warriors that are more damaging. And we've picked up our first temporal beacon, which I'm not going to place because 
we don't have any vampire mansions yet. And I would like to drop a uh, stop some spawns of the watchers. I wouldn't mind seeing one tile by like, what they do. Nope, not interested. So just to check out a uh, good loop they've got. Uh, sorry, loot they've got, not loop. We're in loop here at the moment. So this could be a very tricky tile if this is a mimic. This might actually be where we consider putting some of our beacons as well. It's not a mimic fortunately for us. But they're so annoying to fight. We've got level up. 0.25 to skeletons level for a loop starting from the loop which is, is received. I can see why that would be useful. Plus one skeletons. I think I'm going to take the level at the moment. I feel a bit underpowered. So from now on, every loop we do, our skeletons will get better. Assuming we complete another loop, which I think we will do. Let's hold on, an amulet with level down, the quality up, attack speed up. I'm gonna take it. I don't really like, super like it, but it's okay. Fortunately, with something like these guards as well, which can take a bit of aggro off us, save our HP, and allow us time to get another skeleton out. We will make it through this fight. Oh, we picked a ghost. And a ghost of a ghost. I don't think we've seen this before. Lowers attack speed of allies by 15%. Well, that's not a problem for them. Pretty low. Seems to have really good evasion as well. I mean, these fights at the moment are very prolonged, I can't lie. Finally we beat it, and we've picked up another Blood Grove, which will go over here. Sticking forest down. Yeah, we can put another treasury down there, put one of these down. We've got a village, question mark. And perhaps this is now where I'm going to start putting my next road lanterns. Hmm. I don't know. Let me consider. We also picked up Grimoire. Should be like noticing this a bit more. So it's one defense for and five percent evasion for like 0 0.06. De yeah, sure. 0 0.06 level. I don't value that too much. We've been very lucky at the moment for the mimics. We haven't picked any up. This should give us time to find another skeleton. Of course, targeted the chest, going for the loot. Uh, immediately, I'm going to switch this over. I prefer the skeleton level, please. Skeleton's now at 36 HP for the basic ones. So they're slowly getting there. We are at a point now where I think if I got another skill up and it gave me plus one skeleton permanently, I would take it. Uh, cemetery. I think I'll place this also in the, the row of the beacons. Yeah, that's fine. I should probably place down these meadows now. I only need to hold two of them. Now we could do with the HP as it takes over to the day, even though it's only like six HP. Every little helps, as I said. We've been close to dying on runs, we've been like one hit away. It could be the difference in the end. Uh, summon quality up and attack speed up. I think I will trade this for the yellow rings. That's fine. Still no vampire mansions yet. It's interesting, they sometimes show up a lot, other times we don't see them. Villages we just never see apparently. As I said, I don't know quite how that is uh, decided, what cards you're going to get. As I said, I feel a bit uh, under the game's thumb right now, so I'm going to pop open or. Don't you mean fountains? Right. So a ring with summon quality and skeleton level. So this is just better than our right ring. Although, what's this got on it? Evasion summon quality. Yeah, I'll swap the left ring, actually. Yeah, that's fine. A shield with summon quality on it. Evasion high defense. Welcome to the team. Level and quality. I think this is better than the right ring, to be honest with you. Just for the point two three. We're coming to the point now where we need our skeletons to survive a bit longer. 
We're at real risk as we said losing fights from just like suffocating. And this is a big skeleton level up, attack speed up. I love it. Our attack speed is at the moment is at plus 30%. Remember that these are helping us as well. We finally got a village as well, which is nice. Uh, we've decided that we're going to try and place some of these tail ends of the loops. But I think for now I'm just going to block off this ruins. Although I could have placed another ruins down, I guess. Might have been a bit of a misplay. Yeah, I'll take a ruins here. Next village goes there. I can also oblivion a tile. I'm not sure there's anything that I'm can really worried about right now for oblivioning. I think I'll place another grove down. Blue meadow. Mountain and things that starting to look a little bit better. I'm not sure what my save for oblivion is. It's I could remove the our village question marks. They are pretty difficult. Let's see how we get on. We're about to come around to this goblin fight again. I'm hoping this time we'll deal with it better than we did the first time. Cemetery, single target enemy. Is the blood growth does not affect it there. This blood growth is kind of annoying. It's literally just affecting the boss. I think I'd like to get one more blood growth in somewhere. Probably here. Or here. Either of them are, would be fine. Sorry, a grove, then blood growth here. So let me put the cemetery on the inside of the corner. Still holding on to the beacons and the road lantern. Yeah, this fight's looking much better for us now. Much better skeletons, much more survivability. So I'm it with HP and some quality. We lose 0.23 level. And actually the quality is only adjacent. Uh, sorry. Adjacent equivalent. Uh, 16 HP, sure. I don't think it's a huge deal. More mountains. And we're still not at risk of spawning at a goblin camp yet. I have to remember, I think there's a rock down here somewhere. Again, yeah, these oblivion, sorry, are just lifelines for us can get us out of some really tricky situations. The other use we could have it for it actually is a bandit camp. If we get another village, just remove the bandit camp. Don't deal with it. Yeah, that would also be fine for me. Uh, another grimoire, skeleton level up, attack speed up. We lose regen, sure. Doesn't bother me. We get a quest. We're fighting scorch worms in close proximity, which is a good battle for us. Attack speed, summon quality, summon level, equivalent to the right ring. So this is just an upgrade on the right ring, so I'm not going to think too much about it. But uh, one of the stories is guess of our runs previously is that we've had this moment of like strife. We had it on the rogue, we nearly died with the rogue in the, uh, the last episode. So maybe the fact that we nearly died, I think, with the necromancer in that goblin fight at Lupus Ogre. Uh, is a good sign. It meant that we were pushing the game as hard as we could. And now I think we're on the up, we're coming out the other side of it. But you never know with this game. You can be comfortable at one point and dead the next loop. Ooh, this is kind of a spicy change. So I'd lose a lot of summon quality. Hmm, 70% summon quality. My summon quality at the moment is 68%, so I'm getting very good skeletons. Attack speed, I still don't know if actually attack speed changes your summon speed. I think it does. Kind of hard to tell. But I think for now, the thickets are giving us enough attack speed at the moment. I don't, I'm not worried about that. Another temporal beacon, we're still waiting to see a vampire mansion before we place it. And we're coming up to the our village. Days about to the strike. I would like to get through that, ideally as soon as possible. I don't want to fight two of these wooden boys. The wooden boys are really more like worrying when we have damage to all, though. So we should be fine in the fight. Again, let's place down another ruins. Single harpy. And Daystruck, so we're going to have to fight two of them. 
I'm not going to use the Oblivion. I still think we can save it. But this is a pretty tricky fight. So this is four enemies. But the, uh, the Wooden Warriors only attack when we attack them. Unfortunately, we seem to just be hard from them right now. Yeah, we're getting smacked around a bit. We've had really bad targeting at the moment. But I said we can't control that. We did know going into the cells was going to be difficult. So a bit of it's on me for trying to hold on to the Oblivion for better use. I also didn't get great quality loot off this battle. We have picked up another village though, so let's see where the uh, the bandit camp is going to spawn. Here, and no, not dealing with it. Uh, another one of these groves. Where would I prefer it? I think here is actually fine. Yeah, I, I don't mind this. It stops us getting multiple enemies on a single tile. I could even road lantern up here to help us. This doesn't seem too bad right now. I just feel like I'm holding on to this a little bit too much. But really, the reason I'm kind of holding on to it is that I'm going to place a vampire mansion somewhere. And then I'm going to put a beacon on top of it. And I really don't want to be in a situation where I'm spawning five enemies where one's a vampire, one's a watcher. There could be a, a flesh golem. Because I'm thinking of putting it over here, as we normally do. I just don't want to deal with that, so I think road lanterning around the temple beacons will be pretty strong. We also found our first storm temple, so we can see what happens to the forests. But I'm going to place it on this diagonal. So, you're going to see the interaction. Although, it's a bit unfortunate where our camp has spawned. I'd like to have this around the boss as much as possible. No, I'm going to place it down here, actually. But, kind of hard to see, actually. Well, as you can see on the right of the text, trees that were struck by lightning and burned to ashes. So this gives us magic damage instead. I still don't really know how much magic damage is worth as a stat. It seemed very good when the uh, the rune was attacking us with it at least, because I think it gets around defense. But without being able to see the like defense of certain enemies, it's hard to evaluate. What I would say is it's probably good against that gargoyle that gets an incredibly high defense when it's not on its turn. And we are seeing gargoyles in this run, so magic damage probably isn't terrible. Another grimoire, not interested. And not interested. Probably coming up to the point of spawning a goblin camp again. So I would like an oblivion before then. I'm sure there'll be a mod at some point that tells you how many of these tiles have gone down. I can't really roll this thing here to count for to 20. I know this is 9, obviously. So I'm about to hit another knife, so I think I'm like 17, assuming I didn't place one over here. But it's just a bit awkward when you're going later into the game. Uh, skeleton level up. Defense up. We lose evasion, we lose defense. I'm actually going to switch. I think the skeletons are more important to us. But things are looking pretty nice at the moment. I am definitely now looking for a plus one skeleton, by the way. Every fight right now, we're getting uh, two skeletons. And they're not just getting destroyed immediately, so we would benefit off the third one. So there's max skeletons. I would trade regen and summon quality 17%. I think I will make the trade. I'd prefer a third one than 17% summon quality. Here's a blood growth that I said I was going to place over here. And things are looking pretty nice. So that should be 18 in terms of the mountains now, I think. Again, it's kind of hard to tell. Not at the point of spawning the boss, so we don't have to worry about that. And let's go. Just about the ding as well. I would like plus one skeletons on the level as well, so I don't have to worry about it being on the equipment. So, hero leaf supplies, not the uh, idea of the run. Plus, loop HP for adjacent roadside tiles. That's kind of interesting. We have got a lot of roadside tiles. Hmm, that's interesting. And three stems from the squelch. Three. Words apparently are harder right now. Three strengthened skeletons will be joining the hero in every loop to help in battle. We have taken this before. They do spawn at the beginning, but when they're destroyed, they're destroyed. I think I want a more permanent effect. So I'm going to take this surveyor. It's one of the few runs as well where we have a lot of roadside tiles. And now it's really making me a bit annoyed that I'm holding onto these tiles right now. So much so that I think I will place this down. 
because I'm thinking Vampire Mansion and then Temporal Beacon behind this. Maybe even here. But I don't know if that diagonal counts as roadside. We have more grimoire that, no, not interested. And some call some level of a, what's the difference? Okay, this is just an upgrade on our left ring, so we should take it. It just comes with a bit more evasion. I'm not going to say no to 6% evasion. What is our evasion? It's just 6% at the moment. I said, I don't think we're as worried about evasion. It is, in a way, would be nice because it's... I mean, obviously every stat is nice. But our skeletons not being hit as often means they're going to survive for longer, so they're going to get more attacks in. But I think just having more good skeletons is better than them evading attacks. So here we're getting help from the crossbowmen. And we got help from uh, the Storm Temple, or whatever it's called. I can never remember what it's called. Hey, yeah, Storm Temple, I got it right. Ooh, treasury placement's a bit uh, awkward right now. Let's place it there. This is going to be 19, so next rock will be a goblin camp. And we've passed through again. I still think the plus one skeleton right now is more valuable to us. I said it's a bit annoying that we've had a run. I think three is kind of fine for getting to the boss. I, but I would prefer it on the skill than the equipment. Well, it's fine. We'll cope with it. This fight again is still really tricky. Goblins in Act 2 are horrible. I said it, it's even made me consider like taking out these, and I think I've done runs where I've not run mountains and rocks. Just so that we don't have to deal with the goblins. We've picked up another uh, a grove. Just trying to think of the best place for this grove. I could place it here to block spawns of goblins. And then I could put a blood grove here. I don't mind that either. The other annoying thing about the goblins is they don't seem to give that good loot. I'm sure someone will like mine the data out of this as well to, to find out like what the optimal playstyle is. But I definitely think it can be solved. And now I need the skeleton. Skeletons give free good loot. There's another tile that's a bit. I think I undervalue it a little bit. But I have kept in the deck basically the entire time since I've unlocked it, so. Maybe I don't undervalue it too much. They're difficult enemies, but you don't ever fight hordes of them, so it's very good for the rogue and for the necromancer. I just feel like the warrior is the strongest. As I said, other people might have had different experiences to me, but I found the warrior just to be very consistent. But perhaps the rogue gets into situations where you become more broken. I can see it when you stack evasion to an incredibly high level. As uh, so this is skeleton level, we lose attack speed, but we gain regen. I think I'll take that. And yeah, I'm not sure if the regen goes onto our skeletons. It does say on the start screen that our stats affect our skeletons, but I've never really seen them ticking up. But admittedly, regen is pretty low on this class right now. Uh, yes, this shield is just an upgrade. And things are looking pretty nice right now. Uh, I should start placing thickets around here to open up the treasury. I'm not in a position anymore where I would like sit and hold this for ages. We are on loop 6, it's pretty difficult. We're getting multiple enemies down on tiles as well, which I said is dangerous for this class. Uh, max skeletons up plus 1. And an 18 sum quality. So that's up and skeleton level equivalent. I'm going to swap this with the right ring so we can get 4 skeletons down. It means I can trade the amulet. Which is really what I'm looking at. But I don't think I'd want it with that. Maybe get something a little bit better game. Mmm, no. As I said, these Scotch Worm tiles are fine. Gargoyles are kind of annoying. I think we do have, again, okay, we have one magic damage at the moment, so I think that ignores its effect of impenetrable. But it's still basically nothing. They're kind of annoying to fight, the gargoyles. I can see, again, a strategy of oblivion in the ruined uh, treasuries just to get rid of them. 
skeleton level, magic HP much up. Okay, so we're not going to have four skeletons anymore. I think that's a worthwhile trade now. But I said, it's really annoying at the moment. I'm juggling this plus one of my skeletons around. Would much rather get it on a skill. So this will spawn a goblin camp. So I'm going to hold the mountain for now. Uh, we're 75% of the way spawning the boss as well. I'm feeling in a position at the moment, right now as I speak, that I can fight the boss and I wouldn't be too concerned about it. I'm just going to place the road lantern, I think, up here as well. Reduce the spawns over here. Yeah, I don't feel like we're completely out. Not counting the forest ones, unfortunate. But I'll still hold the mountain. Yeah, I still feel as in a position we could fight the boss right now. But we're not really, like, super OP. We're not just instantly destroying enemies, but I don't think you ever will with the Necromancer. Again, I should be placing these around here to open the treasury. I keep forgetting about it. If people haven't done it, it's kind of hard to uh, record a game and like, kind of talk through your thought processes and think about like what you're doing. You just only forget something, so... I'm sure people in the comments are like shouting at me when I'm making a misplay or like an obvious misplay. I'm sorry about it. It can only try and get better with experience, I suppose. But right now, I'm doing my best. Ah, another village. So this is our third village. It won't spawn a, a bandit camp. I think I want to place it down here. One thing we haven't actually ever done, I think, is place a village next to a village question mark. Or if we've done it, we've done it accidentally. That could be a consideration, but I think for right now, I actually don't want to do that. We have more ruins. I'm happy to place ruins down. We just have to be careful of the tile that goes in front of it. This is kind of a scuffed place, actually. Maybe I should have placed it there because the uh, rat wolves can move onto adjacent tiles. So it might have been a little bit of a misplay. But we'll deal with it. Still holding on for an oblivion. This is a very tricky tile. I didn't really notice. I've not been paying attention to this top right. But the blood clots and the harpies, harp, they both can really like stall fights out. Fortunately, we haven't fought the mimic. If it's a mimic, which it isn't. But the, we're going to get a situation eventually where we're going to hit one of these chests and it's going to turn into a mimic. And then we're going to switch target and it's going to really hurt us. Not a mimic again. I feel like we've got a lot of luck with that. Again, I don't know how I feel about the battlefields. I was sort of trying for these uh, blood clots, expecting better loot. But they kind of give a pretty average loot from what I can see. We also picked up another storm temple, which I'm going to place. Do I try and hold it for the loot? I could place it here and open the treasury with it, which is kind of interesting. Or I could place it here, which does affect more tiles. Yeah, let me place it here. I have to be a bit careful about this because I don't really want to go through all my forest tiles. I think I'd prefer my forest tiles to stay as forest tiles. So I don't think it's a buff actually turning into burning forests. And I've not really seen anything benefiting from magic damage. It feels like a bit of a wasted stat right now. But we've not seen Act 3 boss yet. For all I know, it could turn out to be the best run winning idea. Early in the game, I didn't respect damage to all, and I've done a few runs with it now, and it is awesome. When you get up to like 30 or 40 damage brawl, it really helps you clear out enemies. So, skeleton level up on both things, regen. So, this is where it's annoying. We could trade off the max skeleton, but I feel like the max skeleton is worth it for us. So, I'm going to go into the left ring with this, and I don't think the three defense is worth it. Got a lot of mountain tiles right now. Uh, I'm getting a bit like itchy fingers with it wanting to place them, but I think it is the right thing to do to not do it. I still haven't seen a vampire mansion, by the way. I've been holding these temporal beacons from the start. I'm not going to place them without a vampire mansion because I don't want them on every single tile. Uh, skeleton versus skeleton, uh, like turf war at the moment, and we're through it. Flesh Golem, come on. You've always given us great loot. I love the Flesh Golem against this fight because we're not taking the hits, or are taking the hits. Level 8 ring. Skeleton level down on the left ring, equivalent on the right ring. Regen much up. You just can't take it right now. 
we couldn't like I'm trying to remember this. We will place this if we can get plus one skeletons elsewhere. But right now we can't. Have to be a bit more careful with the boss meter as well. We're at like 80% now, 85%. We finally picked up a vampire mansion. And another vampire mansion, like London bosses, you're waiting for one and two come along. So I'm gonna place one here. And a temporal beacon. I can't place it roadside, so I'm going to place it yeah, here. So their spawns will be blocked down on this tile. I could even place another one adjacent to it, and I think I might do. To get plus 50% again in these two fights. I would like to use this other vampire mansion. Where is the best place for it? This isn't great because I want the blood grove. Maybe up here. Yeah, this isn't too bad. We can get limited spawns as well, so we might want to place one more road lantern over here. Uh, pass go, and let's open up this treasury. I turned it into a burning tower. We've got an oblivion now, so I'm happy to start placing rocks again. As I said, we're coming to the point where we're spawning the boss. Just have to be a bit careful of that. A shield with defense down, no on skeleton level. Nope. Basically a whiff. Well, however, what's not a whiff is this. And that was a very annoying place for that to go, so goodbye. And we're going to continue placing mountains down. Until we get to the point where I think we're about to summon the boss. And then we might hold off. So again, looking like we're going to at least have a, a shot at fighting the boss. Not saying we're going to win. This road lantern is lovely, by the way. I say it's lovely, I don't really know where I'm going to place it. Probably here. Very close to something the boss. It, the real question is whether or not you go for another loop. Like, do I just hold my cards now and not play anything except maybe Oblivions? Forrester's Axe. Every time the hero receives stable branches, he has a 10% chance of receiving more. Okay, that's nice, I guess, if you're going for loot runs. Does this spawn the boss? I'm going to say no, it doesn't spawn the boss. So I think I can freely place this. Where is the best place for me to place this right now? Perhaps... No, that doesn't actually make an effect. Actually, that is an incredible idea then. So I'm not placing any more things down now unless I'm happy to fight them on this loop. So yeah, we know that Vampire Mansions don't stack on top of one another. Boss, we have a skill at the moment that's giving us... Uh, 0.5 HP... F uh, sorry, 0.5 times loop HP for an adjacent roadside tile. So it's basically a free road tile time. Pit to a level 8 shield. Okay, this is interesting. So this has the plus 1 max skeletons. I think I'm going to take it. And I might even hold the other one. Let's just see what we get off this. So a permanent 0.5 bonus to uh, energy arm for every summon skeleton. Doesn't seem great. First two skeletons summoned in the day will be strengthened. Depending on the time, that could be good. And 20% chance to exceed the number of skeletons summon two of them during the last summon. So I'm not sure how that plays out for us, because I think we're filling all the tiles. Let's try the after day effect. And hopefully try and, like, finagle it that we can spawn the boss just as the day changes. I don't really know how our tiles work. I think we just both all get five tiles. I don't think we can exceed that in any way. Uh, up level... Up level, up. that is just great. But we're looking really good right now. I'm very happy. You might not be able to hear it in my voice. We've picked up an oblivion. Is there anything I want to oblivion right now? No. I could oblivion one of those our villages. They're kind of annoying. should be fine for us. So it says skeleton level up, but it's actually a down because there's a skeleton level bonus on the effect. No, not interested. You have to give me more than that. Uh, I would very much like to complete this loop without placing another tile, I think. Other than the Oblivion, which I think I can just freely use if I want to. 
So I think that actually takes a little bit off the placement. Ooh, summon quality up. Max skeleton's down. I think I'd rather the max skeleton now. I think we'll always get to summon it. Do we get to always summon it in the boss battle though? I don't think so. So uh, yeah, maybe we take one off just before we fight the final boss. They're probably gonna do 100 damage hit. I think they're literally gonna one shot all our skeletons. But I don't know, we're summoning them quickly now. Skeleton that level way up. Here's a spicy thing. I'm going to switch it with this one. So I'm going back to three skeletons. But they're going to be great skeletons. I still don't think they're going to quite survive a boss hit. That's kind of what I was hoping for. They would switch over. And not only those worms were also fucking peppering us from afar. And we couldn't do anything about it. It was just an unlucky spawn of the gargoyle, but that's fine. Skeleton level down, quality up. Nah. Not give me what I want. This is a big defense down. I think I'll hold on to it. So the defense should be going for our skeletons anyway. And I'm coming up to the point where I'm going to fill my hand. I'm just trying to consider which... I would like to remove. You know what? Goodbye. It does tick it down slightly, but not a lot. Big skeleton level up on this. We delete attack speed though. It could be crazy, but this is skeleton level now nine. Ooh, do I place this? Do I have enough space to place this? I'll see how I deal from this. This is a really awkward fight, but they only counter. And we have Storm Temple helping us. I did say, actually, I think a while ago that Storm Temple is probably not good for this class because we also have a lot of units. And indeed, it's proving to be the case as it keeps hitting our skeletons. But lesson learned. Don't put Storm Temple in your Necromancer deck. It's a bit eh, dangerous. Odds are no longer in your favour is how I'll put it. This is skeleton level up again. So our skeleton level now is 10.51. I think this is the highest we've ever had it. A day passes, some more gargoyles are coming. I could have oblivioned the gargoyles actually, now that I think about it. They are kind of annoying. I mean, I'm just considering now do we fight the boss. We're halfway around the loop. Our skeletons are pretty good. Let's just see how this pans out. Seven. I think we go for it. I think we tried to fight the boss on this loop. We just place everything down now and just throw everything at it. I can place Battlefield down as well to gain more HP. And I can use the village as well to gain HP and have an extra... Oh, before, well, it doesn't matter actually. What was I going to say? We can place that down and then get extra tiles adjacent to it with Battlefields. Let's just get through this uh, side and see how it looks. We were able just to place that village down. It, it, it's really what I wanted to place down with the village. This blood grove I would also place down, I think. But if we do fight the boss now, it really we have to decide. It, it's so hard. I'm trying to work out if a day is going to tick by because then we'll get strong skeletons in the final battle. Again, I think we need the plus one skeleton off that. This fight's destroying on a little bit. That's fine. We're still getting these resources as well, so it's not the end of the world how it's going. But definitely the next tower we place is going to uh, finger, spawn the boss. I can only see green on his boss bar at the moment. So skeleton level down. Defense down on one ring, not great. 
skeleton level down, way down, but we get defense. I'm happy with how it's going right now. I think a day is going to just take past. It's going to be close there. I think if we think there, the day's going to take by. It's really unfortunate timing. So I think we loop one more time, at least. Good ring, but doesn't have skeleton level on it. Has a lot of attack speed though. Our attack speed right now is 45, which is pretty hard. If I knew Day was going to tink, tick past, I think I would just start throwing the titles down. Crossbowman is going to help us in this fight. We're getting targeted by the Flesh Golem, which is a bit unlucky. We're dealing with it. Ooh. Yeah, so we've gone past. I think we look at doing the boss now. Skeleton level down, evasion up, attack speed up, defense down. Level down again. I don't know, it feels like these rings are a little bit awful for what the level is. Where's our skeleton quality? Do we literally have not no skeleton quality? Sure. Let's put a bit of skeleton quality on. And this is skeleton level down, but plus skeleton. I think I will trade it off. Just so that we can actually trade this shield off, because I'm not really happy with this shield right now. I think we can get a better one. So what we're going to do, we're going to place a battlefield. Do I want it right next to the boss fight? Hmm. Probably not. You know what? I'm going to risk it here. So here's the boss. We'll get HP for passing that, so let's just start throwing the tiles down. That was a misplay. That's fine. Just throw these tiles down, baby. Another temporal beacon that I'm going to place over here. And one more grove that I'm going to place on the tile in front of us. Just for the resource. So this could turn into a ghost, but it's a single target fight, so that's fine. So now we can get four skeletons right now. But what the skeleton levels at? Yeah, they're at 80, so it's really irrelevant the skeleton levels. I would like to get something with... Uh, Sorry, not level, the quality is... Sorry. The level is important to get back. The max number of skeletons is important. I really want a good shield on this loot. That's what we're looking for. I think it's the missing piece right now. I'd be happy with three skeletons, but skeleton level. Even trade it for just pure defense. In fact, it might even be worth just equipping this. In fact, I will do. I'd still want a better one than this, but I'd rather have... Stronger skeletons are more likely to survive. We have a rock. Just need to be a bit careful not to spawn a goblin camp, but I think we're pretty far off it. Regen up instead of flat, no. Skeleton level down, evasion up now. Picked up a lot of resources on this fight as well so far. I mean, we have no choice but, well, I suppose we could retreat, but retreat in a dangerous area. But basically, now I've hit this zone, we're going for the boss. I'd rather lose, the, uh, only gain 30% of our resources and lose everything else, than I think leave with like 60% is it if you leave on another tile. And I say I'd rather lose, I'd rather win the fight more to the point and get 100% of my loot, that's what I mean when I say this. What? 30% chance of like a terribleness and 10% chance of victory. I know that's not how the percentages work, but it is how I'm going to work out in my head. This tile is horrible. Fortunately, it was only one enemy. I didn't really notice the abandoned camp spawn there, or I forgot about it. Oh, that's not good either. 
Unfortunately, we probably won't be leaping after this. So we're probably only going to fight one uh, goblin on that tile. So this is a skeleton level down, attack speed up, defense up. It, this is also where our max skeletons are now. I don't make the trade. I think three is just the right number right now. Quality up. No. It's just give me something with level and quality. One of the blood golems can do it. That's uh, not blood golems, flesh golems. I know they can do it. They've helped me in the past before. And today is going to be no different. Ooh, Max Skeleton's plus one here. Nah. No deal. Again, I have to be a bit careful where I place these right now. Here's our single goblin tile. It's not even, oh, he's a leader in the back. Wish we were targeting him first, but not. So be it. And he died soon after it anyway. And now we don't have to worry about that camp anymore. Ratwolves are pretty uh, annoying, actually. I think it's worth keeping in the deck just because of the Flesh Golem. Oh, hang on a minute. So this would be plus 1.5 on the Skeleton level. Where was that ring before that gave us plus 1 Skeleton? Okay, it's not worth it. It's close, actually, but it's not worth it. 6.96 is where 1.4. So I could effectively have this on instead, which would give me 1.4. Sorry, it'd be like a minus 0 0.6 to the skeleton level. I gain one more skeleton. Sorry, I don't gain another skeleton. I gain regen and defense. Honestly, it's too much thinking. This is just an upgrade. These Scots ones down are slightly annoying, but still, in close quarters, they're not too much of an issue. Still looking for that better shield. Come on, the Flash Golem that we're about to fight. You know you can give us better loot. Skeleton level. I mean, that's better quality of skeletons. There is something to be said for it. It's attacks me down. No. Again, a bit annoying how this is spawned, but it's not too bad to kill off a single enemy like this. Another meadow. I'm going to place a pish, Rangela. I'm just trying to place these in line with storm temples right now. So that I don't accidentally put a thicket there. You got struck by lightning. The flesh comes attacking us as well, which is very, like, not very nice of him. Let's just say. And in fact, he's made us use some potions. We used two potions there. Full hand to oblivion, no. 0.5 bonus to energy armor for every skeleton. And after killing an enemy, a skeleton fully heals itself. That's kind of useless for last battle, so I'm going for this. We did pick up an oblivion as well, so we can oblivion a tile we're not interested in fighting. This is skeleton level down on one ring equivalent, equivalent, equivalent. So this is defense, one defense with three attack speed. I actually think I want the attack speed, so I'll say. Also a necklace here, skeleton level up on it, attack speed up on it. This is just better. Okay, this was worth doing extra relief for, just for that, I guess. I can accept that. Slightly annoying that we got hit so hard by that flesh golem there. Just a bit of bad RNG, I think. Ooh, a 10 amulet. Skeleton level down, quite considerably down. We do get regen, but I don't think it's worth it. Meadows, let's keep placing in, in the way of the uh, storm temples. Do I want to oblivion something that I'm about to fight? I mean, that is a pretty like tough tile coming up. Two gargoyles. This is going to be a little weird, but I'm going to believe you in that. I should have also placed the forest down. I'm just going to find it again and use it after this fight. Oh, I wish things would stop targeting us. I'm beginning to think it's important to pick up a bit of quality to make sure we get some of those bone guard guys. But we lived. 
another blood grove by the boss battle. I don't think that he's stacked, so it's kind of irrelevant, but right now it's making me feel happy. More forests. Place them up here. Oops, uh, rocks, mountains. We're not about to hit a day, so I'm going to place a cemetery there. Temporal beacon. Do I just place it for the sake of placing it? Yeah, why not? What's our quality? 19%. Do I trade? Would I trade a bit of the level off the quality? I don't really want to. I mean, these aren't the ones that I'm worried about. These guys aren't going to survive a single hit, so I guess I would trade a bit of level for quality right now. Unless something drastically changes. That village is very nice to see. I think it will spawn a bandit camp, but it's probably not going to be an issue. And I can place it here. More thickets. Storm Temple, I want to save for that tile. Honestly, we shouldn't have placed stuff here. Because if I get two Storm Temples, I would like to place them in the line. I guess I can place them there, actually. Don't worry about it. There. Meadow. Again, we're being hard targeted at the moment. It makes sense to target the caster. But I really wish they wouldn't. So this is trading some of our skeleton level. And by some, I mean quite a considerable amount. This is like one skeleton level. And or one max skeleton. We can't trade it on the green map. A lot of pretty average loot then, but whatever. I think I'll even spawn this here now. So we picked up a shield, skeleton level up, but defense down. But it's not a big defense down, it's only three defense down. I don't know if that's worth it, but I'm feeling a bit pinched right now. Defense down again, summon quality up. I'm going to try it. This has max skeletons on it, but it's way too bad. I think this is what we're going to fight the boss with. I'm starting to feel a bit less confident now, I'm not going to lie. We're just in this awkward place, like, if we can get a big chunk of level more, and really our only option now is this Flesh Golem, we might be able to... Uh, What's the word for it? We might be able to survive a boss attack, in which case the quality doesn't matter too much. But right now, the level's kind of worthless because we're still going to get one shot. I would much rather get a skeleton guard that couldn't survive one of these hits. This is a slightly tricky tile again. The bats are going to affect us quite badly. I will place that down the treasury, but we're never going to open it. Battlefield, I can't even place in a, a spot that would be useful for us. Bit of bad timing. I guess I could place it here, but I don't know how it affects the final battle, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to place it down for the sake of placing it down. Uh, come on, Flesh Golem. We're asking a lot here. We also need to survive this fight without taking a hideous amount of damage. He's going to help with that a lot. We still don't know if there's actually a skeleton after that. It's something we should investigate, but I think I'd have to go back on to Act 1 to do that. It may be a super chill episode in the future we'll use him. I think we're being targeted again by the Flesh Golem, which is really annoying. Oh, he hurts us so much into that battle. That is appalling for us. Again, I think we've played this run as like, best we could have done, but those two Flesh Golems have just hit us so hard coming into this last battle. And we're not going to get the healer through the day. But let's not give up just yet. I can get some more skeleton level. I lose the quality. Which I don't think is worth it right now. They're basically the same. 8 shield. has more defense on it. Skeleton level up. But not the quality. I don't think I can switch. Okay. I don't think we have the resource for that. But Here we go again. Could you please stop? I refuse. Two arms. Okay, quickly into the battle now. 8% chance of being protected by a stained glass window. Will we get three out? Currently we're getting targeted by the boss heavily, so I think we're just going to insta-die. 
Oh, it's also the lightning that's hitting us. I mean, Odin gives, Odin taketh. That's fine. We just got hit so hard on that last loop. A bit of misplay probably by me as well. I did have an Oblivion and I chose to Oblivion. A pretty okay tile. I should potentially have removed the Flesh Golems there. But... It's sad to lose these items, but it's not the end of the world. They can come back around. We still get a big chunk of resources. It would have been nice to have all the stable uh, metal. Oh, interesting. I've never noticed this before. We can take all, but it costs us... Is it two of these skulls? Let me just try. Okay. I've never noticed that before. Yeah, it took two of our orb mortalities. Okay. That's... Not too bad. I don't know if they have another use or if that's their sole purpose. I don't think I've seen anything in the build menu. So, I think that's worthwhile. We picked up a lot of metal. We still don't have enough of this alchemist tent. We're missing this resource here. Time shards. I don't know if this is what I'm getting off defeating the boss. Or if it's just like an Act 3 resource. Either way, it's fine for now. I think we're going to take the Necromancer back into Act 2 again. Uh, is there anything else we can build? Are there any upgrades we can do? Mm. We could upgrade the... Uh, what are you even on at the moment? The Herbalist Hut. So it gives us plus one slot. Plus two percent to the potion's healing effects. Not really what I'm looking for. Okay, we need one of these orbs as well for the gymnasium upgrade. Refuge we can't upgrade. Warehouse we can't upgrade. Library we can't. It doesn't want as many resources that we can upgrade. Smithy we can. 40 metals. Gives us a smith forge card. And we get basic gear for any class. War camp. Okay, plus 4% to hero strength. We get a camp item slot as well. You know what? I'll do it. Uh, what? Did you get tired after just a few laps around the camp? That's fine. There's no shame in failing. But there is, uh, sorry, there is shame in not trying to improve yourself. So give me another run. Right now. And don't stop till your legs give out. It's a small damage increase. But I'll take it. It looks like you can upgrade it again. Unsurprisingly costs a lot of metal. We could do a super chill episode at some point, but I think for now I'm quite happy just trying to grind out through these acts. I think these time shards we got from beating the boss, and I'm currently guessing because these are a circle that they can upgrade into a full resource. And I think that's going to be what that other orb is. Uh, let's just see in the supply menu before I finish. Can we actually place something with this? No. I think it just literally gave us one more of these slots, but not actually an empty slot. Okay, that's fine then. Well, not terrible this episode, I guess. It could have been worse. But, sad to lose on the boss. We'll go back again with the Necromancer next time and see what we can do. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.